What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay, my journey to 10,000 live listings. Thank you for joining me today um, on my journey to 10,000 live listings on eBay. Um, today, I want to go over the 10 easiest categories to make $100,000 on eBay in 2018. I actually messed up the title. Um, this is for 2018. This is from basically interviewing almost 200 resellers this year, um, hosting masterminds. Um, I have almost 100 people in my group if you want to join. There's a few spots left. Um, I have um, 20,000 plus Instagram followers, and I'm talking to those people constantly on what to sell. And that's probably the most common question that I get. So I thought I would make a quick video on what I think is the easiest way to make 100K on eBay in 2018. Now, I have been preaching that you guys should be trying to make $100 um, per category a day and picking three categories. So if you have three hundred dollar a day categories that's three hundred dollars a day that is the f you money you need to potentially quit your job if you want to you should be able to get by on three hundred dollars a day unless you have a huge spending problem and then you can work your way up to whatever um, living income you need for you know depending on where you live in california 100 grand is like poverty so trying to give you guys some ideas these are the top 10 categories in no particular order, but this is from interviewing literally hundreds and hundreds of resellers. Okay, the first category is cell phones. Um, to make $100 a day, you may only need one cell phone. Uh, if you want to put the work into Facebook Marketplace, uh, OfferUp, LetGo, Craigslist, your local church, everywhere looking for a cell phone, or you want to go to the mall and work out deals with the people who work there at the kiosks to get cell phones, you have to learn all the ins and outs of stolen phones versus not locked versus not GSM versus not different carriers. You need to learn all of that, but you, if you put the work in, that's one to three cell phones per per day to get to hundred dollars. That's that's not too difficult. Over the course of a year, you should be able to learn the specific categories. This is live, by the way. Um, this is the specific categories to. Uh, I mean, you should be able to learn all the skills required to make $100 a day in cell phones if you just put in the work. There's other electronics, but I think the cell phones is the easiest. No matter where you live in the country, there are people that are upgrading their cell phone to the newest, latest, and greatest, and they want to get rid of their old phone. That's where you come in and provide that service. What's up, Wade? Um, okay, so the second category that I think is the easiest way to make 100 bucks a day is eBay Partner Network. Um, so... As far as eBay Partner Network goes, you literally need zero money, okay? So you need to find a popular product. Let's say you're selling, you want to review um, cameras and you find a nice Nikon. You go onto YouTube, you make a video for free. If you don't have a, a computer with a webcam, you can use your cell phone. So I guess you do need a cell phone to at least record yourself making a review. Sign up for eBay Partner Network. Connect your affiliate link. Excuse me. Um on your YouTube video to the affiliate link, somebody will click on there, you will get a percentage of the eBay fees that literally costs no money. So if you guys are creative and you have, you can even go to the library and borrow one of their computers and do this for free, get a video up, start making affiliate income. It's one of the easiest ways to make money. I have a video on how to set up eBay Partner Network. If you guys don't have that set up in your store, you're literally wasting money. If you're sending people to your listings from Instagram or Facebook or wherever, you should have an affiliate link hooked up. I'm actually going to try this in 2018. Um, I have thousands of customers on eBay. I'm going to send them an affiliate link instead of a coupon code. I'm going to be like, hey, there's a really good deal on iPads right now. You should buy one. Here's the link. They go to it. I'm going to potentially make more money on that affiliate click in instead of something else in my store. Because some people are like, hey, um, check out my other items. But maybe they don't want another pair of um, an another sweatshirt from you. They want something that's hot and trending. So I'm going to send them a QR affiliate code um, with the actual mailer to try to get them to buy something more expensive and get a bigger affiliate commission. So that's something that's bomb. You guys are not taking advantage of eBay Partner Network. You're literally wasting money. Okay, the next one is um, used clothing. So... The reason why I say it's really easy to sell used clothing is because I, I know more than a thousand people in person that make a hundred dollars or more in the used clothing category. And it's so broad. You can do anything. You can do clothing, uh, shoes, jackets, outerwear, hats. There's people who only sell socks. There's people who only sell ties, everything. 
right? So just you need to make sure that you don't sell everything because you may not get good enough at one category to understand your niche, right? And I, I could ask most people on Instagram, what sells really well in your store? And they don't know. They're, they're not sure. And if you were really into a niche, like you were selling blazers, you would know which blazers are on trend, which ones sell faster, which ones sell slower, which ones you get more money for. You would know because you specialize. If you don't and you're a generalist, you're going to have no idea what sells well in your store. And that's a huge mistake. You want to know exactly what's selling in your store. Use clothing as abundant. You can even get it for free. Um, just realize that most people donate items that are under 30 bucks. Okay, so if you're going to move towards something like me in 2018, I'm going to move towards consignment with a very aggressive percentage because I want inventory coming to me. Okay, like I want to open up my do door when the mailman, he's like, here's 100 things to sell for people. And I only need to pay for the photography cost to get it online and the list there from the VA. And I'm not going to photograph my own items or list my own items. So all I have to do is answer the door. That sounds like an amazing business to me. So consignment is not in this 10 easiest categories because it's not one of the easiest categories. It's one of the most difficult categories because you need to have really good organization to get people paid on time. You need to have sales systems to get people to stuff to move. You know what you're doing. So that's not the easiest way, but it's the, the model that I'm going to move towards in 2018, I love consignment. There are dozens and dozens of examples that we can follow together. Uh, if you want to look at a consignment model, email me at 10k on the bay at gmail.com and I will hook you up. Uh, if you're in the video right now, please hit the like button. I'd appreciate that. Let's eBay know that, or let's YouTube know that you guys are digging the content. Um, okay. So the next thing is, next category is your house. Um, I recommend you you sell everything you own, and I mean that. If you want to, if you're really serious about eBay, why not? You can get everything again back on eBay. You can build your feedback up. You sell all the things you own, all your clothes, jackets, your chutzkis in the house, all your kitchen appliances. Just sell everything so you can get an idea of what you like to sell. One thing that surprised me was there was a really bomb store in the top 100 that only sold knives right only sold knives you would never think but i mean how many times how many days do you use a knife for me it's most days you know i use it to make a sandwich or i use it to um for lots of different reasons that's why i would use it but it makes sense that a knife store would be in the top 100 because they've really mastered that niche so that's something that i think is very important start in your house figure out what you bought you have a really good um memory of what happened to that item if you're selling a ski jacket you can say i wore this jacket four times it has a tear on the left sleeve i spilled coffee on the right um you know things like that that only you would know and that's going to reduce your defect rate versus being surprised by buying an item in the thrift store don't get oh don't get um too trigger happy when you're just starting um, buying stuff for ebay you want to slowly grow your knowledge and i recommend growing your knowledge in one category at a time. There's plenty of time to sell lots of stuff on eBay. Just do one at a time and get really good at it so you have an idea of what's selling. If you don't know how fast your items are gonna sell, you're in trouble. You have to know because otherwise it's just random. If you have a random store, you're gonna have random results. Let's not, let's not do that. Okay, the next one is um, medical devices and equipment. This is huge. Uh, medical devices and equipment are extremely expensive and you know as far as once somebody's illness has passed or they have passed or you know they're done with the treatment people are donating this equipment um you can you can find it at estate sales oftentimes you can find it at the thrift store if you're looking hard enough um, you can also look for calculators electronics are expensive so if you can find those at a cheap rate it's a good thing to specialize in it's going to require that you really get into it because you're going to need a testing station you're going to need to know what you're looking for so if you're going to enter in the medical devices category make sure you have an uh you know you want to you put the time in to really learn a category medical devices are insane um the one of the people i talked to that does over 100k a month is 100 percent medical devices so that's great. Shout out to Eric Garcia in, um, I don't know, actually, I don't know if Eric Garcia is in the chat, but he was the original um, a photographer that I had. So I put a listing up on Craigslist to get somebody to um, come to my house and take photographs. I did a listing party 
which and and how, that's how I set it up. I said I want three or four people to come over to my house, and we're gonna list together. We're gonna have a party. I'm gonna order pizza. We're gonna figure out how to do eBay. I did that almost a year ago. A bunch of people came over. One guy was an actual doctor, so like literally passed the exam already. He was a practicing doctor, but I put up hiring for a one day gig um, instead of saying I need an employee. You don't need an employee. You, you, I mean, it's a long, you're a long way from needing an employee. You're gonna probably gonna start with a contractor and even before a contractor, you're just gonna look for some help. So I put up an ad for a Friday, for a Saturday for help with, with one task, photography, had people come, took a look at the process. And honestly, they taught me how to do it because after a few hours, the process gets more refined and, um, toned down to the exact processes you need. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next category, number six, is trendy home decor or things that are on trend in general. Things that are in season, obviously, are going to sell well. Like if you're trying to sell Christmas ornaments now, you're a little too late to the party. Christmas sells well all year, but like it's a lot easier to sell it in the middle of November to the middle of December because people are going to use it right away. It's a great time to sell heaters somewhere where it's cold. It's a great time to... Follow the holiday decor and the trendy stuff that's in people's houses. Um, you know, I had the um, interview with Thrift Love's Cell, Loretta. Shout out to Loretta. And she, you know, sells teacups and decanters and brass. And these are things that are really popular right now. And that's why they sell well. Um, Hannah in the chat is saying Ray Dunn um, sells well. It sells well right now, but it may not sell well in three months. You've got to pay attention. You can't just pick up. Not all Ray Dunn is created equal. And this is something I want to stress to you guys. This is why I'm not naming brands because brands change. I don't know when you guys are watching this video in the future or right now. I'm not sure, but I just want to let you guys know that they can change. But you want to stick in categories. Home goods has passed... Um, clothing as the most thing that's sold on ebay so electronics home goods clothing those are the top three categories as far as volume so you want to be in that area also um i need to, to um clarify it's home decor clothing used and new and electronics new and used so and the majority of ebay is actually new so if you guys didn't know that um if you listen to the last keynote from ebay 86 percent of ebay is new with tags so if you think that it's competitive in the used category. Try selling new. It's totally different. Way more competitive. There's only like 14 used Banana Republic dress shirts that are blue with white stripes. If you try to sell new, there might be hundreds of people with the identical shirt. So talk about race to the bottom. Very challenging to be in that area. It's very challenging. Okay, let's move to the next one. This one I'm also going to focus a little more time on this year. Number seven is luxury items or retail arbitrage. So this is not my favorite thing to do because I don't like waiting in line. I think waiting in line is a huge waste of my life, but I'm going to make a sourcing map that allows me to go during off time so I don't have to wait in line as long. I'm going to get some great podcasts to listen to. I'm going to bring my journal with me so I can write down ideas for YouTube. Um, speaking of which, if you guys want to support my uh, video creation, I will be making a vlog every single day in 2018, sharing lots of different kinds of stuff. So if you wanna support that journey, it is expensive and time consuming to make a video every day. So you can hit me up on Patreon, you can donate up to a hundred bucks um, and it's for content. The day that I stop making content, I'll turn my Patreon off. That's the whole point of that. Also, if you guys want to know how to do Patreon, please reach out to me at 10K on the Bay at gmail.com. I do, um, I'm in the top 200 creators for Patreon. So people that, are people are liking what I'm throwing down and they're supporting my content and saying, giving me ideas for every single video. So it's not necessarily a vlog. That's a good clarification, BG. Um, it's just a video. I'll be being a video every single day in 2018. I'm going to have a bank of them. So in case I don't feel like making a video that day, I'll post one of the videos that I made previously. But I like to do live, I like to, to, to interact with people in the chat and figure out what's going on. But again, if you want to know how to do Patreon, that is huge. It was based off of a thousand true fans by Kevin Kelly, one of my favorite articles. You get a, a thousand people to pay you a hundred bucks. That's a hundred grand. Um, for me, I'm looking for a thousand people to pay a thousand dollars. 
So that's where I'm going with my Patreon. I'm going for a million bucks to make content. And at that point, I'll have somebody um, filming and helping me write the content. I'll probably have real people who with, with much, much better instruction than it is right now. And I think that will be the most useful. I think everyone should have a physical products company, period. It's just a, such a good amazing feeling to sell a toaster to somebody in a different state you just get so much satisfaction from that and if you don't something is wrong with you because somebody really wanted a good deal on a toaster wait till you get that feedback from someone that says my wife loves me because i got a toaster at a good deal from you thank you so much for delivering that service to me anyway i got that tangent the next one is sporting equipment um sporting equipment is incredible so i know uh, multiple six-figure sellers per month that sell sporting goods so we're talking about golf equipment lacrosse equipment uh, i would consider cleats and shoe equipment in this category equipment sells a lot more than just regular shoes or clothing because it's useful and it's necessary and it needs to be replaced and athletes are rough on their stuff so they need to replace it so sporting equipment is massive um, golf clubs is huge if you have a connection with the local country club you've got it made because people who are rich and play golf when they buy a new set of golf clubs they don't need a good trade-in value they don't care they, they they're happy to donate it to a program like first tee or give them a hand me down to a person who can't afford it they are already abundant they're abundant to the point where they can spend six hours playing golf like that's insane if you think about how amazing that is you're paying in california like up to around 75 dollars to waste time for six hours so you might be able to do some business while you're out there and it might be worth your while but what i'm saying is think about how abundant america is there's people that do that and when they donate their golf equipment and get another two thousand dollar set there's your chance to come up. So sports, sporting equipment is huge. Um, number nine is hard goods. I actually put that in the, I need to update the description. Hard goods is, you know, appliances. It's basically things that are not soft, if you think about it that way. Um, things in the house that you would use beyond just um, home decor. So if you're going for, you know, I would consider, hmm, what would I consider hard goods? Just a massive category of things that people use so and this is why i like hard goods so much is because they have utilitary i'm sorry util, utility beyond just the brand right if you have a panini maker regardless of the brand it's worth x amount just because it can make a panini right so it's very important to do that um because that's just people need these things all the time and they break you can sell the microwave dish that's inside sometimes for 30 dollars, depending on what microwave dish right this is something that you would never know unless you're a reseller and really getting into it and investigating and with all these categories guys please don't try all 10 it's not going to work because you will not get good enough at a category to make 100 dollars a day and i want everyone that listens to my channel to make at least 300 dollars a day please make $300 a day net because that's going to be awesome. I want an army of people that are like that. So one day we can all sit on an island and talk about the coolest thing we sold. That's beyond just flipping stuff on the internet. We can we can have some some great conversations. Okay, um, like I, I just want to just reemphasize how cool it was for me this year to sell a polar bear cookie jar to Switzerland. That just makes me so happy that that exists. Okay. The last category I saved for the end um, because I don't want other people to enter this market, which is shoes, right? So I told people in a previous video that people don't have feet anymore, so don't sell shoes anymore because they're not needed. But I was being facetious. Some people don't have a sense of humor. Obviously, people still have feet, so shoes is a big deal. Uh, if you're going to sell in the used um, shoe game, I think it's the easiest and the cheapest but it's a lot of work because you got to make sure to clean up the shoes and um, make it so they're presentable and they're going to sell fast at the $60 and under range. I think you can make $20 a pair pretty easily. That's where I would play if I was just getting started in the new shoe game. If you have more capital, start the new, the new shoe game or if you're patient, you can do that. But don't start the new shoe Nike outlet game if you don't have a little bit of capital because it is it is a kind of a patience game in my opinion so don't do that um i'm gonna take a little bit of q a right now bg is saying no video games in my list it is not an easy category to make a hundred dollars a day it is an easy flip 
but getting enough uh, items in your st enough video games in your store where you average a hundred dollars a day is very complicated because you have to sell a lot of games that make three and four dollars to reach a hundred dollars a day how many rare super nes games or or um, systems can you really get um without you know, I guess you could get them, you could snipe them, you could go to garage sales and try to figure it out. But I don't think video games is in the top 10 easiest. I think video games is in the top thing, easiest things to flip, but not to build a business, not to build a 100K, because it does take a long time. Um, I do recommend if you are going to play the game, do the drop shipping, look at all the forums to find out when cool games are coming out. I agree, BG, that it is a really easy category to sell. I just don't think it's an easy category to make 100K. I know very, 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 very few sellers that do 100K in video games compared to all the other categories I just mentioned. And I don't know a single seven-figure video game seller, not one. So I don't know. It's okay. It's just not like... In my opinion, it's super easy to make it. But you're right. Maybe I can buy 007 10 times. Uh, that's a good. That's a good point. Um, cell phones is my number one thing. Let's see. What would what would I do um, if I lived in a big city and had limited storage and funds? I would sell electronics. Um, I would sell. If I lived in a big city like New York City, I would sell watches. Honestly, I would go down to the jewelry district. I would say, let me take a picture of every single watch in your store. I'm gonna take unbelievable photos that you can't even take yourself i would learn some photography i would go there with my light box photograph everything in the store post all of it and when it's sold i would go to the store and buy it the reason why i would do that is because those items take so long to sell in the store and you don't need to sell very many to kill it i was talking to um, ebay corporate and i was saying how many people do seven figures from home i want to know like can you connect me with people to seven figures at home and they're like Chris, that's extremely difficult. To do a million dollars, you usually need a small warehouse, but the people who do a million dollars from home sell jewelry, jewelry, currency, or watches. So if you have very limited space and unlimited capital, sell stuff that's over $1,000 ASP. Um, I shared that store, uh, Pineapple Express 15, with you guys that has an average sale price of 1000 And they don't need an inventory system. They, they don't need anything uh, with a thousand dollar ASP. How many items can you really have? So it's just like, you know, in one area of the house, he doesn't even need a shelf really for that few of things. Um, Lexus mentioning um, antiques, glass uh, lampshades, antiques, toys. Um, I don't think that's an easy way to make a hundred K it's an easy flip but not an easy way to make 100K because you have to spend the time to go get it. Um, the rest, of, most of the stuff in my, in that I mentioned in my list is easy to find, right? So you, you don't need to go to great lengths. In my opinion, um, you know, I did, I did an interview with the straight eight, if you guys wanna check it out. The straight eight, he does 100,000, right? Um, per month, he does 25,000 a week selling antiques. He spends 70 hours a week sourcing. Okay, between he and his wife. So they do split it up. <laughs> 70 hours a week sourcing, looking for like what antiques are selling. That takes a lot of time. That's not easy. Okay, that's 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 a learning curve to get there. It's not it's not not the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you want to go car parts, I also don't think that's the easiest way to make 100k because speed. Speed is key. Um, I've noticed with a lot of sellers that they don't have the they have bright consistent photos, but they're not necessarily pure white. Um, but they, they have speed. They move really fast. Car parts is not usually very fast unless you're selling new car parts. New car parts is fast. Um, and I actually know, you know DIY Mike on YouTube is awesome. And he sells a lot of used car parts and new car parts. He does quite well. I just don't personally think that's the easiest category to make 100 grand. Again, there's probably 500 easy categories to make 100 grand on eBay. I'm just talking about ones that people can find anywhere. Um, what would I do if I lived near outlet stores? It depends. If I had um, some cojones, I would just go in there and max out my credit cards on different things, figure out what was selling. If it didn't sell, I would return it, and I would just keep rinsing and repeating until I had uh, a nice core group of products that sell. Maybe Wiener Schnitzel has a limited edition Christmas tin that's, that sells for 50 bucks. I would figure that out if I lived near a retail spot. Um, let's see here okay musical instruments musical instruments is insanely profitable but i don't think it's easy to make 100k unless you have some 
connection or you have a passion for guitars, basses, cellos, violins. I see them. I see those out there. It just the amount of time it takes for me to learn whether or not it's profitable worries me a little bit. But that being said, I like I like I recommend people get into a category where their items over a hundred dollars because you need some home runs. Honestly, if you want to kill on eBay, you need some home runs. Shout out to Wade's Ventures in the chat. He has a storage unit uh, video with me where we talk about finding how to buy um, storage units, and he does extremely well all the time. He sells items that are over a hundred dollars. So please be in that in a category where you give yourself a chance to make a home run. If you're only selling bread and butter. 10 to 30 dollar items you're gonna really struggle on ebay in my opinion you really need to get some some huge home runs in there um let's see how much in annual sales from replenishables replenishables this year for me that's a good question i need to go break down it did 171 this year um my first year really full-time on ebay from basically nothing so that's the reason why i only did 171 not way more is because i didn't focus so if you guys want to do that, um, you know, I was I was distracted honestly by too many good categories. You guys have mentioned even in the chat right now another twenty categories that are profitable on eBay that people can jump into. I should I should maybe put a caveat in the title that says that the top ten easiest categories in my opinion, because and there might be people that are like, bro, the easiest way to do it is candelabras. I don't know. So I'm just I'm just giving you examples from what I've heard from talking to all these people this year. I don't know. Um, what's up, bro? Um, any recent home runs for me today? I sold a, a Polo Ralph Lauren golf windbreaker for 160 that I paid 10 for. I would consider that a ridiculous home run. Um, so, am I still selling thrift stuff until the day I die? I love thrift stuff. Um, I'm just only picking up thrift stuff that I can make at least 20 bucks on. So, that's the new. Um, strategy for 2018 with the thrift store i'm, I'm, I'm not going to have a death pile because there's not that many items that are 20 dollar profit so like the the guru craigslist hunter talks about most people donate don't donate stuff over 30 bucks so if most stuff's not over 30 bucks like don't expect to find stuff over 30 bucks regularly you'll find some stuff but not to the point where you'll have a death pile in my opinion i don't meet too many people that are like man every single item i find at the thrift store is 50 bucks I can't list it all. I've never heard that really. Most people are in the opposite situation. You're starting with eBay. Um, do you use the eBay app for checking products? Of course. You need to download the eBay app on your phone, start studying studying solds. Uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me at 10k on the bay at gmail.com. If you would like me to review your store, you can buy one in the link below. I'll take a look at it, give you five actionable ideas to improve your store. Um, pretty fortunate i've done like 150 reviews with with all positive feedback on those so people seem to be happy with the five ideas i recommend you do that even with people you don't know go to starbucks and pay buy somebody a cup of coffee to look at your store and tell you what they think they don't have to be nice to you they don't know you so if you hire your friends they're just gonna say you're doing a great job hire somebody that doesn't know you that's a third party to be a little huff, uh rough on you uh john's asking do i pay taxes quarterly i do and um state everything is withheld automatically now so i'm not doing i pay taxes daily all of them, when, when stuff comes in i'm allocating it into the different accounts for tax and savings as soon as it comes in so like um it's being filed by my cpa quarterly and it's immediately being separated so i take 30 percent of the net profit immediately into a tax account right now um that way i don't have any surprises later so 30% in the save into uh, tax, 20% in the savings, 50% back in the new inventory. I'm super blessed. I do not need to live on my eBay income. It's just it's just uh, gravy. So I'm going to roll it into itself until it's 600,000 listed. Um, that's the theory. Okay, I'd like to get $600,000 listed on eBay and then uh, sell that three to four times a year so I can be a titanium power seller. I can go to that meetup group that's only... There's a meetup group, guys, that's only titanium power sellers <laughs> there's like 10 people in it but if you don't do 1.8 million in sales and you can't go i want to go to that summit sounds fun um do i have a certain goal that i want to list daily great question jen my goal is 500 listings per week monday through friday so 100 listings per day is the goal so i want to do 100 listings per day at 20 dollars profit that's two thousand dollars a day ten thousand dollars a week that's my ebay goal so I don't think it's going to take me very long now that I'm starting to focus. So I used to not focus 
because this year was about being a generalist. The reason why I have a mastermind call where people don't cancel is because I tried to sell everything this year, right? I sold everything this year. I ordered stuff from Alibaba. I like tried to figure out private label. I figured I, I learned how to do YouTube. I learned how to do affiliate income. Like I tried a million different things. That is not the right way to make money. Do not advocate that. Do three things really well to make your first 100K net pre-tax and then start doing other stuff. Don't, I do not wrinkle, rec uh, wrinkle, I do not recommend what I did, which is very random. I, I had random results this year because I did a random strategy. I can save you guys a lot of time. Don't do that. Just pick three categories and get really good at them. Um, let's see. Um, drop shipping i don't like drop shipping um but it is very extremely profitable so um not my jam but it does really well um i need to do i forgot the guy that has 90, 90 000 listings drop shipping that i talk to occasionally um, not really my favorite thing to do so i don't do it but something that, that you can look into uh, what are some automation productivity apps that I use to list 100 items a day? Good old fashioned hard labor. I don't I don't have any listing productivity stuff. I just have my um, photographer photograph 500 items a week and my lister list 500 items a week manually. Um, I do use Text Expander. I'm coming out with an ebook in a couple of days if you guys want to get it. Um, it's like 30, it's going to be called 30 Days to a Better eBay Store. And um, it'll be free. Like if you want to watch it every single day in January, I'll release one of the tips for free if you're cheap. Most people are cheap. Most people don't buy anything. So it's cool. You can just get the information for free. I'll give it to you. But if you want to buy a list of it so you can just knock one out each day, it'll be available for sale in uh, one or two days. So you guys can pick that up. But um, I think that or depending on when you're listening to it, it might be available. But 30 days to a better eBay store, just do one thing every day, even if it's just your, you don't even need me. Just pick one thing to improve a day. After 30 days, you should have a totally different eBay store. Um, let's see. Are my vlogs different from the mastermind calls? Yes. Um, what did this, uh, yeah, this, what, Oh, what I did taught you a lot this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I think a lot of people leveled up this year by looking at the way I did things. But I made a lot of mistakes that people learned from. So if you are smart, you learn from other people's mistakes like me, um, and you just do the, all the right things. So I recommend you do all the good things you like from watching me and all the bad things. Don't do those things. So um, You've been buying products from China and just selling them unbranded on eBay. That's a great idea. I do not want to wait two months when I buy something e packet from China for 99 cents shipped. They'd rather pay $7.99 from Ubiquitous and get it in two days. So that's that's legit. Um, let's see. What's the painting behind me? Just some flowers. A uh, hundred dollars a day is hard. A hundred a day is hard for a one man woman show. Well, the thing is, it depends on like. Do you need to make, ten, are you too cheap that $10,000 of profit a week? You don't want to hire help. Like it doesn't make sense to be that cheap. You don't want to do a hundred listings a day. The idea of my channel is to help you make a hundred grand a year peacefully. Listing a hundred items is not peaceful. I'm using two people to do that. Three people to do that. Other people that's trying to do a hundred a day by yourself is definitely possible. I'm not trying to kill you guys. I'm trying to make people happy. So like get some help. $10,000 a week is a lot of money. Uh, like you can, you could buy a small country for, no, you can't, but $10,000 is a week is a lot. Be able to, you can afford some help at that point. Let's see. You found a restaurant supply store that sells an item you could flip. Um, your pounds. Well, get in on it. Figure out how to ship freight. That's very important for you to get into um, a restaurant supply store because if you sell freight, um, there's a gentleman that I met that only sells dental equipment, and his average item in his store is five thousand dollars, right? And every single thing is a really heavy dental equipment piece of machinery, and he probably has five competitors on eBay two of those are the manufacturer so like 
if you can get and figure out the freight, you can ship heavy stuff that nobody wants to sell. I'm pretty sure maybe the easiest category to make 100K on eBay is treadmills. I don't know. If you, if, I don't know how to ship a treadmill. I would have no idea how to do that. So if you can figure out how to do it, um, here's an idea for you treadmill-wise. Had a warehouse in all 50 states or you rented the space um, for treadmills. Uh, I mean, a little bit of storage space in all 50 states, and you bought a container of treadmills and you delivered it to every single state. You could put in your listing free shipping treadmill, and in the details, put you have to go pick it up. And then you could crush your competitors because they have to charge $600 to ship a treadmill, and you don't, right? So I don't know how to do that, but that would be a way for you to do that if you wanted to figure out how to hack the shipping and make it free. Um, I had a friend that did that with pool tables. And uh, he made 600 grand doing that. And to go pool tables on eBay, except for his item was $500 cheaper because it was free, cheap, free shipping. Do I have a different PayPal account for each store? Um, that's a good question. Didn't before. I did for the low key Husky store, but um, I'm going to separate it now because I'm going to have different purposes for each eBay account. Um, I'm going to have a, a separate eBay account that I try to live off of. So, crazy but i have like 20 sources of income now and i would like to save a hundred percent of that income and just live off of one ebay store so I, I don't know how to do that exactly i was talking about it with my girlfriend today um like patreon um stuff that i'm selling i'd like to save a hundred percent of that money um there was a i met this guy that had 15 years of savings for a reason that's so sexy to me Holy crap, 15 years of savings? You could just do nothing for 15 years? That sounded to me better than like a BMW. So I was like, and he told me that for years and years and years, he saves 100% of his income because he has, or his regular job income. I was like, how is that even possible? So doesn't make sense. Let's see here. How much do I pay someone to list for me? I pay 70 cents per listing, but I would like to pay 50 cents a listing. Um, You know a guy who sells giant power generators for 100 grand, he's a multimillionaire in 30? Yeah, exactly. Um, wish I could sell 10,000 jets. I would be the richest man on earth. Let's see, why isn't there a dope e-bike on the market? I don't know, make one. Um, let's see. I like um, Scavenger Life, they're really cool. I wanna try to get on their podcast at some point. I invited them to our event in Kansas City. If you guys want to go to that, um, the link's in the description below. Um, you get a, uh, I think a $100 discount if you use 10K on the bay. So it's two. So if you want to come see us, I have 50 resellers coming to that event. It's going to be super bomb. The first one is the hardest with everything. Everything is the first one the hardest. So once you get the, the, the hang of it, you need training wheels the first time you sell anything, even a pen. If you want to sell a pen, you, you would need to do some research. You can't just sell a pen. You have to talk about the thickness, the, the ink supply, like the condition. Like even if something as simple as a pen would take a little bit of time. Do I feel comps right now are reliable? Um, I think you should specialize. I don't think comps are reliable. I don't think Instagram is reliable. I don't think YouTube is reliable. I don't think you should listen to anything in this video. You should do your own homework. This is why I say you should focus on three categories, one at a time, not three at a time. That's that's called not having priorities. You want to have one priority. Learn how to sell straight jackets. Figure out what sells well. Figure out the market for yourself. Sell a few. Then you'll know. You don't even need the sold at that point because you'll be able to know what's up. Um, do I use a VA for the listings? Yes. I have a virtual assistant. Um, that does the listing and a local person does photography. What's up, Joan? Um, you said that you have a lot of pictures from when you first started two years ago that are not very good. Uh, I think for pictures, the only thing that matters is consistency and brightness. Um, they don't have to be white. They don't have to be wood. I like. I personally like the some dude's house look. That's the store I like the most. I'm doing the white background because I want to have both because people always ask me, how do you take perfectly white photos? And I have that video, and it costs 20 bucks if you guys want it. Um, but I can teach you to take 20, uh, perfectly white photos with no expensive equipment. Um, but pictures just need to be bright. A good example is Wade's Ventures is in the chat, right? I'm going to shout him out again. He like has um, 
a backdrop, right? Which some people would frown upon. They're like, oh, you have a backdrop, like it's distracting, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. Still sells a lot, right? I've seen people who like it's on their coffee table, it's on their dining room table, it's in the kitchen. The thing is, it's all about speed. If you can do it quickly, it doesn't matter where it's listed as long as it's bright and consistent. If it's not bright, if it's dark and inconsistent, then your store looks like a yard sale. It's like randomly placed items around your 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 house. It's dim. I can't see the item. Are you are you selling inauthentic items? Why is it dark? You should at least take pictures outside. There's no excuse for not taking bright photos. Um, if you want the photography video, email me at 10k on the bay at gmail.com. I'll send it to you. Um, pictures of clothing that are not very good depends on what why they're not very good. Is it because they're they're not um, because they're not uh, clear? Is it because they are misshapen? Is it because they're wrinkled? It just depends. If you don't, in my opinion, most people selling junk clothing would be better off just redonating and starting over, because you need you need headspace, you need free space to create headspace. You guys should write that down. You need free space in your house to create headspace so you can think so that you can get rid of it and you know start selling stuff if there's no stuff in your house and it's cluttered and you can't see anything you can't think you can't get out of this situation um so clark the category that i think is the bomb and somebody asked me if i could sell one category what would it be it's handbags but it's not the 10 easiest bro um it's not the 10 easiest it's um it takes a little bit of work and as a dude it's not my favorite thing to sell but you know I do like money, so I'll I'll be I'll do that more often. Did I find the VA and Upwork? Yes. Um, I also have a Facebook marketing company that you guys, some of you guys know, that was paying my bills, um, but I'm probably going to close it because um, it's distracting. Just like my rental cars, I have a rental car business that does really well, but it's distracting. So I probably will shut that down. I have uh, multiple VAs. I got them on on uh, on Upwork. How many days is my event? My event is three days. Um, the first two days is, um, I think we have 20 speakers. So I, I basically picked all the best people uh, that I could find um, that like their business models. And then I, you know, selfishly, I want to learn from them myself. But of course, it's nice to meet people in person. Um, I know tons of resellers in person. Snow and cold weather gear is selling well for you. Yeah, snow, I mean, it's a good time for it. It probably will sell slower in the summertime. Uh, let's see. No, no. Okay, Sam, this is really, um, okay. If, to me, you do not look like a real store if your photos are taken in different parts of your house. It looks like your house, right? The some dude's house is a type of store, right? I like the some dude's house store look. I like it so much that that's the basis of my low-key husky store. I, I, I still think it looks like a store. 99% of the pictures in my store look the same. So like that would be very odd for somebody who's running a hobby store to take photos the same way. That would be really weird, right? That'd be like somebody who is an amateur weightlifter that like has a schedule and an eating plan. Like most people that are amateurs don't do that, right? They're, they're taking it very seriously. Um, inventory system management. What's up, Daniel? Um, yeah, I need to redo it. I mean, I, my uh, ten thousand item uh, store will be done in a couple of days. Hopefully, I get it done by by uh, just by January first, and my inventory system is done. So I sh I'll, I'll do one tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll go into my inventory and show you, um, Daniel, so you can t take a look at what what ten thousand items in a garage looks like. <laughs> What's up, Big Drift Thrift? Uh, I love Alaskan people. Um, I have a really good friend, Brittany. I don't know if you know her, but she does Alaska proud. Um, taking photos outside in Alaska is challenging this time of year. True. Um, I personally think that I, I personally use a, a really expensive lighting kit. Um, it's in the link below. I have four lights. It's like 600 bucks. I can take perfectly wide photos. I can take perfect photos with an iPhone SE, which is 150 bucks. So you don't need an expensive camera. I also have an expensive camera in case I want to do it that way. But like, you don't need expensive cameras. You just need consistent and bright. Um, do all of my stores um, store items into one system? Yes, one system for all my stores. Um, consistency and brightness makes your store look professional, in my opinion. 
cons consistent, bright. That's all that matters for photos. Because there's there's so many exceptions to the rule with people. Like, okay, let me give you an example. There's a guy that um, um, um Ronaldo ninety two. He takes pictures on his bed. His bed's not even made. Okay, the bed's not made. He doesn't care. He's like a he's like honey badger. The items are wrinkled. His bed's not made. He does like ten to twenty thousand a month because every photo is the same. Okay, so like it still looks to me like a store. It's like this guy just runs the store out of his bedroom. I get it. Respect. It's it's legit. He describes everything. He measures everything. It looks the same. And I'm also not expecting anything fancy from him. He probably has really low returns because he didn't even make his bed. Come on. So if you guys are still in here, hit the like button. Um, let's go to the next one. Let's see. You want to see my skew video? Um, my skew video is relatively simple. Um, so like this is um, bin number 59, item number 14. So I have 400 bins in my garage that each have 20 items in them. So that's 8,000 items. And it goes from A0 to A99 and then C0 to C99. I'm sorry, C00 to C99. So 100 bins in one letter. So my system can go all the way up to Z um, and can go up to 52,000 items. I don't know if I want to get that large because then you have to have more staff and it just becomes more complicated. I don't know if I want to store that big. Um, you're using an old iPhone and the pictures look fuzzy. I would get um, an iPhone SE. It's 150 bucks. It's the same camera as the iPhone 10. So uh, as far as megapixels, it's 12 megapixels. Uh, let's see here. If there aren't any comps on some designer items, how would you price it? Based on similar items. I mean, that's and it sounds like a dumb answer, but like if it's if you're selling a wallet that's Louis Vuitton and there's no similar ones, but there's a, a Louis Vuitton wallet that's wallets are selling between 400 and 600, probably price it somewhere in there. Look at different brands, look at different styles. This is why I recommend you 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 sell one category. People who sell one category don't ask that question because they they understand that category. Uh, let's see. How do I how do I figure out ending inventory? I all of my listings are good till canceled, so I don't mess with that. Um, you're a Canadian living in Alaska. Ooh, I love Canadians also. I love most people, um, but Canadians especially. I have a good friend from Edmonton. I talk to you pretty regularly. Um, so you're the best of both worlds. Also, if you guys are on Instagram, you can go on there and meet people. Um, I looked at Big Drift's thrift. Like I was talking about um, doing flat lay, and she said you should get a table and set it up. So now I have a table. I even have a drafting table. I have a drafting table and a flat table and a folding table. Um, one cool thing about having a YouTube channel about eBay is that people will pay me to try stuff. Right, so they're like, "Hey, Chris, why don't you figure it out, and then you let me know what it is, and that's something you can do." So, like, if I was trying to make the most money possible, I wouldn't do YouTube. YouTube is actually fun for me, so and it's still been fun for me a year later. So, if you guys do something, um, YouTube is for fun. I do reselling to make money. It's totally different things. Um, I would do YouTube even if I didn't make any money. I would not do reselling if it didn't make me money. Uh, what's my what's my opinion on a PayPal working capital loan? Um, I have not taken one yet, um, but I, I you know Prince is coming here tomorrow. He took an eighty thousand dollar working capital loan and paid it off in sixteen days or something, and he paid seven thousand dollars interest to use money for sixteen days. But the thing is, he's in college. He doesn't qualify for a business loan. He has no history. He didn't want to borrow money from friends or family. He didn't have credit cards with that kind of limit. So why not? Did it? Uh, made sixteen grand. Paid the seven grand loan. He's still nine grand ahead of where he started. Not a bad, you know, two weeks of work. But it depends. If you're going to use it to go to uh, Barcelona and hang out um, at the beach, that's the wrong way to hand. That's the wrong way to use the working capital loan. Um, I have a weird uh, um, concept where I just like if you're going to spend your working capital loan on inventory, go for it. But you know, again, I'm not a financial advisor, but I just think that you should do that. Um, let's see. My event is at resellerfam.com. What's up, Mike? So, um, Mike, if you're listening right now, the calls are going to start again on Monday. Um, we are going to add a couple more people. So I'm pretty excited about that. Hope you had a great holiday. Um, 
And it, if you guys want to see what my mastermind calls look like, they're on Monday on YouTube. If you want to check it out before you join um, my personal one, there's one on YouTube publicly so you guys can see what that looks like. Um, my VA currently logs directly into my eBay account, but I'm switching that up next year will be Inkfrog. The date of my event is the 8th, 9th, and 10th of March, and it's in it's at resellerfam.com. Resellerfam.com. Um, iPhone 6. Um, I think blind, iPhone 6 is legit. Um, but I, again, I recommend iPhone SE if you're on a budget. Um, and then a 6 or higher, I think, is a 12-megapixel camera. So I did a lot of homework on this. I tried iPads. I tried digital cameras. For me, the fastest way to do it is... Um, a point and shoot camera because I just like it. It's so light. Um, it takes pictures automatically in the one by one ratio. The orientation is this way. If you guys have an issue with your photos being needing to rotate with the phone, make sure you take it with the button on the right, the right side. Um, so button on the right side is how you take it so you don't have the rotation problem. I don't know if any of you know what I'm talking about, but just um, that's what's up there. Um, let's see. Is my VA overseas? Yes. Um, let's see. What's up, Chunky Onion? Sorry. If you guys want to hit the notification icon, you'll get the alarm when I go live. I go live at random times. But next year, I will not be random. I'll be doing live almost every single day at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I'm still strict on my daily schedule. You want to hear my daily schedule? It's very strict. Um, I wake up at 4 o'clock. I would like to work out, but most of the time, I just go for a walk. Um, Go for a walk. Um, I have breakfast. I'm trying to eat the same breakfast every day, but um, I'm probably making a hundred decisions related to food every day. I need to get rid of that. So, but anyway, wake up at four. I eat something. I have two mastermind calls in the morning, six o'clock, seven thirty every day. Um, help those people. So I start my day off with gratitude, uh, helping other people do stuff. Um, from nine till twelve, I do an eBay sprint. Um, so I do two of those a day. I do eBay for about five to six hours a day. Um, but that's it. During those times, I'm only working on eBay. I'm not working on other stuff. And then around three o'clock, um, I do YouTube. So I work on a YouTube video or um, some questions that people put together. And at five or six o'clock, I am done. I don't work anymore. So that's how I want my life to be for the like for the next foreseeable future. I love that day. I actually don't even want to. I feel like I'm on vacation every day. It's like the best life ever for me because I like I like selling stuff. My passion is selling stuff. Right. And so, you know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm working because I'm selling stuff. Um, let's see here. Is reselling my full time income? I make a full time income, but it's not my main jam. Um, I make a full time income, but um, my goal for 2018 is to save. Actually, my goal for 2018 is to reinvest all my eBay profit until it gets, I would like to have $600,000 worth of stuff listed. That's 200,000 profit. This, this conversation a year from now. So um, let's see. Yeah, I think that I have a video on taking photos, but basically I, I take perfect photos right away. There's no editing. So I can, I'm not going to go over my process on this video. I'll, I'll save it for a different video, but um you don't want to take photos that you need to edit unless you like wasting time. Uh, let's see. You sell mostly clothing. That's okay. You can sell mostly clothing. I'm going to sell mostly clothing. I don't. Um, one of the reasons why I'm going to sell mostly clothing is to show people that it can be done. Like wherever you live, you can buy cell phones and clothing. You can get started on eBay and you can switch to something that you like more. Uh, what's up, Michelle? Um, Michelle's in my mastermind call. She took notes this morning. Um, guys, it's really fast paced. I'm going to be in there moderating the call. I'm going to force you to get better. That's my job. I've been doing it for a long time now. I've been doing it legit for nine months every single week. So like I, I know how to make you make your eBay store better. Now I need to focus on doing that for myself. Um, this year I, I did spend some of my hours after five o'clock, um, scheduling people into the mastermind but this next year since it's already full for the most part i don't have to spend any time doing that yeah it's true ryan and ali are going to be there rally roots is going to be there i asked them to speak um so you know my my conference is going to be ridiculous also if you guys didn't know the reseller fam conference that i'm hosting next year is the second biggest ebay conference under ebay open so you should go to both go to ebay open to talk to the mothership and then go to ours to meet all the people who are doing well 
Um, yeah, the, the button on the right allows you to not have to rotate the pictures. Um, once, what's my end game? Um, my end game is to um, leave the money in my eBay store forever. So it's like a, um, a savings account, um, an investment account rather. Um, I want to continue to do a mastermind for the rest of my life in different topics because all the richest people I know do this. Um, and, and to be honest, when I'm in these mastermind calls, I get to take the best ideas from all the people in the group. So I level up faster than everybody else in the group because I hear the most from it. Now, whether or not I actually address the things that I learn, if, whether or not I execute, I don't know, but I think I have the most relevant information. What camera do I recommend? I recommend any camera that can take a square one by one photo. This is a Lumix Panasonic, um, Panasonic Lumix, um, but also iPhone SE on a budget. 150, 12 megapixel camera. It's amazing. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Uh, I mentioned or any point and shoot that takes pictures in the square format, in my opinion, is really good. Joan, I think you had a question that I missed. Uh, Re-ask the question because I didn't. I didn't see it. Do I still go to the bins? Um, kind of. I still buy from the bins, but I don't go there anymore. Hopefully that <laughs> answers your question. Um, that's true. I have grown a lot since I popped up. I, I started my YouTube channel on March 1st. And to be, to be frank with you guys, my YouTube income is above my bills. But it, 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 again, it's 100% savings because it's not my main income. But my YouTube income has passed my bills. So like, um, that's what happens when you make five videos a week for the whole, for, for nine months. Like you said, to get a following, people follow you, people expect you to deliver value. And I've been consistently trying to make the best videos I can to give people a shot at creating FU money so they don't have to work for anybody. What do I do full? I just went over my schedule. Basically, I wake up and I do eBay for six hours and then I do YouTube and other projects until about five or six o'clock and then i hang out with my girlfriend that's pretty much it i don't do uh i'm trying to keep it simple <laughs> right now um in this stage of life um i'm trying to do something that's forever um so i really 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 enjoy what i'm doing right now it, oh is nicole state going to be there um probably she's not a speaker i didn't invite her to speak but i did invite her to come she can come but um, i'm not going to have her be a speaker at my event let's see here do you suggest auctions or buy it now on eBay? Both. Um, most of the time you ask me a question like that, I'm always going to say both because they have different uses. Um, what's my rent up here? 2800 bucks for a bedroom and the garage. So not super cheap. Uh, what camera do I use for YouTube videos? Just the one in my MacBook. When am I getting married? My girlfriend is charging me a quarter carat per year f uh, penalty for not proposing. So it's getting very expensive at this point. So I need, I'm need. i going to propose in 2018 for sure. I'm not going to go through another cycle of the ring needing to get bigger. Because it gets, you know, if you guys don't know this, each quarter carat or every increase in the in the ring, it doesn't go up linearly. It goes up like exponentially. So like I'm going to propose next year for sure. She's expecting it to happen. Let's see. Um, Oh, you're asking if a 3.43% return rate is high. Um, Sam, who's in my mastermind call on Mondays, has a 30% return rate. And it's still fine. So like, it just depends on what category you sell in. If your profits are really high, it's okay. If your profits are really low, returns will destroy you. Um, if you want to, yeah, if you want to come message me, there's a, there's a um, coupon code 10K on the bay to give you the best deal. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, there, she's she's the better half. She knows what's going on. Um, at what point would I recommend help? Um, decide on what you want your store to look like. Work backwards. So for me, um, the reason why I want to have a photographer and I don't want to be a husband and wife team, um, I really like my girlfriend. I think if I spend that much time with her, we would start to hate each other. Like, you know, I just don't want to spend that much time together with her because I like our relationship. If I spend too much time with her, we're going to um, kill each other. So like, I like that she does her jam. I do my jam. We have a jam together, three different jams. Perfect. Right. Um, but as far as the help question goes, the reason why I have a photographer and I don't do this solo is because 
I want to go on vacation and have him ship or her, his, him or her ship. I want to trust one person with my business enough that they can do that while I'm gone. Otherwise, you can never take a day off with the eBay store. I don't want that. I want to be able to take a vacation. So I want eBay to be my uh, permanent income cash flow, to be my cash flow. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, there's people who do it. Rally Roots is a great example. Ryan and Ali work together all day and they, they don't kill each other. But for me, I'm just like, um, I'm not people, I'm not fun to be around. So like if people spent that much time with me, it, it wouldn't be good. Let's see. You can source with your husband. Exactly. You can source with your husband, but if you had, and I can source with my girlfriend, we can go, we can go shopping, but that's, that's also an activity. Listing is not fun. I couldn't list with my girlfriend. She'd be like, she, she has a really good process for listing. She just gives me the item. Um, the person I have listing does it in the Philippines. So no, I live in California. My listers in the Philippines. Um, they make about nine bucks an hour, which is six times minimum wage there. So I'm overpaying for my VA, but that's okay. Um, yeah, the quarter, the quarter, the quarter carrot diamond penalty per year is a progressive penalty for not proposing. Um, she's not in a hurry. She just wants to create a sense of urgency that's a really good sales strategy guys she's been listening to me too long i've been in sales my entire life so i really 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 enjoy sales because i believe it's the transfer of energy from one person to the other that's what i'm passionate about i'm really fortunate that i'm passionate about something that makes money i was talking in my last video that um i think passion hurts people it's because you could possibly be passionate in something that's not profitable that's why i i don't recommend don't recommend following your passion. I think that's stupid advice. Most people's passion is to do something fun and fun doesn't usually make money. Um, so let's see, what have I splurged on with my profits? Um, I, like I said, my, I'm really excited about 15 years of savings. So right now I haven't, I already bought everything that I want minus like a supercar. I mean, other than like a Lamborghini, there's nothing else that I want. I have all the cool toys. Um, and I'm really enjoying being abundant. Like to th this year, when I I uh, I served food on Thanksgiving. That was fun. I would like to um, splurge on retreats where I could go do stuff for other people. Because like most of the stuff on eBay sell, sells for under twenty bucks. I don't know if you guys know this. If you look at Terapeak, almost everything on eBay sells for under twenty bucks because America is poor. So like that's a sad reality, but. Um, can I make a custom SKU function on eBay? Yes, I will do that. Have I ever sold perishables? Yes. Um, I sell dog food on Amazon. I don't know if you guys know that. That's a fun fact. Um, I sell Amazon, I sell dog food on Amazon. Let's see. Oh yeah, the push ring. At that point, I won't worry about it. Like I was thinking about giving her the money so she can buy the ring from Costco, and then if she doesn't like me, she can just return it, right? That'd be a lot easier. Plus, it puts the pressure on me to do a good job as a husband. Let's see. I found the Philippines person on Upwork, um, but I have more than one VA. I'd actually like to have two VAs in case one VA doesn't want to work. I want to back up. I don't know if I want a separate photographer, though. Do I sell paintings? Unfortunately, yes. I have a bunch that I picked up at estate sales. Um, like, like this one. But yeah, um, art is one of the categories that I'm going to sell in. But um, it's not an easy category to sell in. I don't recommend you start with art. I, I like art. Um, but yeah. Should I own a home or rent? Depends on where you live. Um, California, most likely it's better to rent than own. Um, but it just it depends. It really depends. Um, let's see. Your boyfriend loves video games. Um, but you make more from selling. Yeah, I mean, just you gotta you gotta balance it all out. Um, let's see here. Do I have a Terapeak tutorial? I'm a Terapeak noob. Um I like Terapeak though, because it basically shows you what's selling well. So instead of listening to me, you can get a subscription to Terapeak. I don't get an affiliate commission, unfortunately. I haven't had time to set that up. But um, eBay just bought Terapeak, so maybe they'll make the information free. Um, 
when do I spend time on my other forms of income? Between three and five o'clock, between three and six. And if I'm not hanging out with my girlfriend, I'll be working on business. Um, the other streams of income are hobbies to me. I think it's fun. Um, you love Costco. Yeah, Costco is the bomb. Um, read the book Fake, okay? I'll read the book Fake. Let's check it out. Any luck on storage auctions? I've only purchased two this year. Both of them were very profitable. So um, I like to think that those were not lucky, but probably a little bit of luck played its played its place in those. Um, I don't have a therapy tutorial. I just I just went in there and figured it out on my own. Um, so I, I would I actually should take one. I think that they offer free classes on it. Um, I should get in there and do that. Uh, of the clothes I'm wearing, how much of it is listed currently? Um, I used to only wear thrifted clothing for like maybe a month, but my girlfriend doesn't like that. So now I'm just buying, I'm only wearing new clothing. Um, yeah, so I, I just picked like five different outfits um, and half of my wardrobe was Lululemon that I, per that I paid full price for. So like, I don't know. Um, I sold a $400,000 supercar one time and the guy paid full price and he said, I pay full price because I expect people to pay full price when they do business with me. So I was like, Hmm, interesting. So that was crazy. So he literally paid 400 grand for uh, Lexus LFA, 424 grand. And he paid cash. Or, I'm sorry. He didn't, he, he financed. Um, but my point is his mentality was, um, I want to make, I want to pay full price. I want people to pay full price in my business. He made $600,000 a month and has never used the coupon, never not been to Starbucks, didn't save any money, just purchased for full price every single thing he wanted in his life. And he makes 600 grand a month. So like he didn't listen to a single savings thing. Um, he has eight figures in savings, tons of investments. So it just depends on your, your personality. Like, you know, um, one of my favorite people to follow is Ramit Sethi and he talks about how saving $4 on Starbucks a day doesn't make you rich. Like creating streams of income does, um, for the most part, you can't save your way there. Um, this is not how to save money. This is what, this is why I have a problem with grant, uh, with Dave Ramsey. I like Dave Ramsey cause he teaches you how to save money, but he's not teaching you to create value. Like this, this, this video today is helping people make more money. I think that's more valuable. Um, than just saving a couple of bucks. But again, I like Dave Ramsey. He's super rich, fantastic entrepreneur. I respect that part of it. I just don't want your main game for life to be saving money. I think you're missing the point. How does a VA work? Um, in my photographs, I take a picture of the measurements. So my VA knows from practice how to read those pictures and translate them in the measurements. Um, so when I did wear 100% thrifted clothing, I had a, um, a tag. So instead of um, C, I used the letter S. And I had uh, on my wardrobe S1 through 100 or whatever. And I just wore all my inventory. Um, I used to do that. Um, I thought, oh, yeah. And when I first started, because well, I, I gave the advice that you should list everything that you own. So my low-key Husky store, I started with 200 bucks and I just hit 50,000 in sales. That's from the same 200 bucks. So I did cheat a little bit on my Husky store because um, I have an Instagram and YouTube following. So people from online buy stuff from me, like you, Elsie. You bought um, some bags from me. Hopefully you received them already. But like, it's not fair because my sales are higher because people that follow me on YouTube buy my stuff. So I don't want to, I don't think it'll be as easy for people who just start from scratch to get to the same level. So I'm not pretending like that didn't help a tremendous amount. Um, let's see. How am I going? How big do I want my eBay business to get? 1.8 million a year, 600,000 profit. 600,000 profit. 1.8 million in sales. That's how big I want my eBay store to be. And at that point, I should be more com I should be comfortable, hopefully. Um, well, okay. I think it's about creating value, not money. You create value and the money will follow. Um, I mean, I actually, I have a ridiculous budget next year. I've never been on a budget. Okay. I'm going to try it next year. I've never been on a budget because I, I just try to make more money and it's always worked out. 
but I'm going to try it next year. I'm going to try this budget thing. There's a, there's a local um, Asian guy here that has a channel called Beat the Bush, which sounds pornographic, but it's not pornographic. It's just short for Beat Around the Bush, and it's a very cool channel on personal finance, and I love it. So I want to change to being like him, where he learns how to save money and maximize his day. So uh, I want to change to that concept. Um, um, so my secret eBay store gets three times more attention than the Husky. No, no, no. It doesn't get, um, it gets way less attention than the Husky store, which is the point. I only want people going to the store that are going to buy. My Husky store has 3,000 people who don't buy watching it. That's a horrible way to run your eBay store, having all that traffic go to your store and nobody buys anything. That's not how you do it. I didn't put in here. Did I put create an Instagram channel or YouTube and talk about your eBay store? That's not how you do it. Because all that traffic that goes to your store and people don't buy, all these people in the chat right now have been to my eBay store and didn't buy anything except with the exception of LC. So that's not good for your eBay store. It's unhealthy. I would not talk about your eBay store. Your friends also don't care. So don't talk about your eBay store with your friends or your family. They don't care. Um, they have their own problems. They have their own issues. They don't care about the situation happened between you and your customer. Oh, um, YNAB. I don't have to write this down. Man, people are giving me resources, leveling up in the middle of the night. Let's see here. Um, also, on my schedule, I usually go to bed by 11, so I got to go in a second. Um, do I do drop shipping? I don't do any drop shipping right now because I have the capital to buy the stuff. Um, he is kind of a weird guy, but I just like his channel. So um, let's see. Let's see. Beat the bush is cool. Uh, oh, how much attention from me? I don't have to do anything with the Husky store, really. I just have to buy the items to put into it. If you guys didn't know, I'm trying to build the eBay franchise system so that um, we, we, it's like we own a subway, except for, and all the processes are figured out. All the, all the way to make the sandwich, the pricing, all that stuff. All you have to do is figure out what sandwiches to put in your subway. That's what I want to do with eBay. The 120, you know, the store that I'm trying to make 600 grand on is not public, but I will try to do that. The same thing on the Husky store, because why not? I already know how to do it one time. I should do it multiple times. Um, would I pay a list or $2 per listing locally? Um, dep it depends on how good my profits are. Um, if the profit is $20 or more, yes. I would not pay more than that because it's not necessary. Um, let's see here. You learn from ordering things from people you respect. Awesome. Uh, I just wrote down a YNAB. I'll, I'll, hopefully I can figure it out. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go to sleep. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, if you want to join my Patreon group, um, my Mastermind's limited to 100 people. It's pretty much full at this point. It is $100 a month, but um, I want you guys to see value in it. I have had horrible luck with free mastermind groups um, unless there's some kind of thing with it. So like on, on Monday night, that's the only group I'll be, I mean, I'm totally transparent with everything I do. The reason why my Monday night mastermind doesn't cost money is because I make ad revenue from it. So like it's also advertising for my own Patreon group. So it doesn't make sense for me to charge people who are on the Monday night call because they're already paying me by letting me monetize the views. So like everything is all in one thing and very transparent with what I do. The final thought I'll give with you guys is when you're creating value, it's, it's kind of fuzzy. This is if you guys made it all the way to this part in my video, um, I'll give you the, the thing that's made me the most money, which is basically people ask me to review their stores, right? So I go into their store and I can see what's selling in their store and the store that I don't share only sells those items. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys, but I'm cheating because people ask me to review their stores and I'm only writing down the items in their store that sell well and I sell those myself. So if you can get into a position where people ask you for help, you can figure out what they're doing well and that's that's like cheating. I feel like I have an unfair advantage with that. But everyone have a great night. Uh, please like and subscribe. Have a great, have a great night.